Okay, Luke chapter 12, verse 18. Then come unto the Sadducees, they're the other religious group. The others were uh, Pharisees, which say there is no resurrection. So they don't believe, nor have believed, in the resurrection of the dead, even though it's been going on. So every time they get word that, you know, Lazarus has been raised from the dead, uh, this, this this widow's son raised from the dead, and the, and the daughter Jairus raised, they don't believe it. All the, the stories in the Old Testament, the resurrection, they don't believe it. And that's not all. Acts chapter 23. Acts chapter 23. Verse 8, it says, For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel, so they, Sadducees don't believe in angels, nor spirit. Now, nor spirit is, they deny Genesis chapter 2, where God breathed into man, he became a living spirit, a living soul, a living body. They don't believe in that. They don't believe in ghosts. They wouldn't believe in the Holy Ghost. But the Pharisees, the other side, confess both. They believe in the resurrection. They believe in angels. They believe in spirit. Go back to Mark 12. And what happens is this, the Sadducees stay to the temple worship. And then when the temple was destroyed in 70 A.D., the Sadducees faded out. And there are none today. Primary, most religions in form, one form or, or another believe in an angel. And this is where the error you get of uh, devil and demon. Because there are religions out there that believe in an angel or another form of a name of an angelic form, and they are demons. Which means they could be good or they can be bad. The King James 1611 language of the Bible saying devil means every time you read devil, not demon, it's an ambassador of Satan, of the devil. Whereas if you were to take the word demon, you could read into the Bible where you see demon, it could be a good, or it could be bad. But devil nails it down, one specific angelic as of Satan. And we have gone into the great custom all over the years of growing up, demon, 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 demon. Demon possession. No, the Bible says devil possession. There is never ever a possession of a being into somebody to do good, but that would be a demon. A demon's good or bad. They asked him, saying to Jesus, Master, verse 19, Moses wrote unto us, if a brother, if a man's brother die and leave his wife behind, and have no children, that his brother should take up his wife and raise up the seed unto his own. And that's in the law. So it shows they know the law of Moses, sort of. Now, this is called a Levirate. And forgive me if I'm saying it wrong. It's called a Levirate marriage. Where if the brother dies, the brother takes the wife for marriage. In the Hebrew... It's called, and forgive me for being wrong, but Yimba. I'm trying to read it with my blurry vision. The Yavin is the brother-in-law. The Yimba is the widow. And the Kladi, Kladi, I'm saying it wrong, Remains removal 
of the shoe of one that does not want to take the marriage, that follows the Levitic law where the wife was to spit in the brother's face and say he doesn't want to do his brother's job. He doesn't want to take over the family seat. He's refused it. You, you remove his shoe and he spit in his face. Well, the and can go, which I'm saying wrong, I apologize. It's found in Ruth chapter 4, but they don't spit in his face, and Ruth is not there. So there's a law, and there is a, as a church today, you make up your own. Now there were seven brethren, now where they got seven, seven means complete. Whether they were real men or not, we don't know. It's a trick question. And I'll show you in a moment. And the first took a wife. And dying left no seed. There's no child. There's no son. The second took her. That's the Yavin. Yavin has taken a Yavin, the widow. He's trying to teach you some evil. And dying left no seed. He died. There's no seed. Neither left he any seed. And the third likewise took. To, as the second and as the first. Now we come to the reason is. It's not the male. It's the woman. That is biological. Impotent. Of child there. Like. Ruth. Uh, uh, yeah, no, not Ruth, like uh, Rachel, like uh, Rebecca, Sarah, and other women found in the Bible. The seven had her, so four, five, six, seven. The seven brothers had her. And, and, and believe there's a movie, I don't know what the movie's about. I just know the title. Seven brothers for seven brides. <laughs> Something like that. Well, where did I get that from? You got it out of the Bible. I've gone through the Star Wars series, and you won't believe where in the book, not the movie, in the book is the Bible. And the Bible is quoted. So, in the fourth place. Not pervading the Bible's quoted, but for their relationship and what they believe. The Bible's quoted. It's ridiculous. So the seven had her and left no seed. So it is definitely a 99% chance that it is the woman. Last of all, the woman died also. So here it comes. Here's where you show the Christian has no value at all. And if you're in any kind of public witness, you're going to meet these kind of people. They'll ask you questions, and they don't want an answer. They won't believe the answer. Where did Cain get his wife? I've had that one. What do you think about gay people? I've had that one. So, if we go back, we're not going to go to Acts 23, but if we go back up, And the Holy Spirit tells us, verse 18, it told us in Acts 23, they say there's no resurrection. The Holy Spirit nailed that. It said, Mark, make sure you put this down. Paul, write this in Acts 23 for Luke to record. In Act, uh, Mark 12, 23, in the re resurrection, they don't believe in the resurrection. We're dealing with people today. We will deal with them. We will talk to them. And we will address them as who we see them, biologically, a male or female. And they will say, no, I'm... A male will say, I'm a female. Or a female will say, no, I'm a male. 
and you will you will counteract that. They're not going to believe that. I don't care if you would get a full length mirror, strip off their clothes, have them stand in front of that mirror, and tell them that is the body part for a male. That is not the that is not the body part for a female. They're not going to believe it. When they shall rise, they don't believe that. Recorded early in Mark 12 and in Acts, they don't believe it. It's a loaded question. Were there seven men? I doubt it. Not saying there wasn't. Whose wife shall she be of them? For the seven had her to wife. So in the re resurrection that we don't believe, if they go to, then there's no revelation of heaven. But after, in the afterlife of death, well, <laughs> you can't have seven men married to one woman. But in the Old Testament, you can have one man married to seven, eight, nine, ten, a thousand wives. Now, let me tell you, the Mormon church is doing that today. I have heard on good, reliable source that they have talked to, they have dealt with a woman who says she has multiple husbands and she's of the Mormon church. See, the Mormon church is just the fact that it's sexual impurity and under the license of religion. My memory fails me many times. Joseph Smith, it came up, was died because he was in jail and he was beaten to death by the husbands of wives he stole. Jesus answered and said unto them, Do ye not therefore err? Look at that. You got to be nice to him. You got to be respectful. And he walks up to him and says, you're an error. You're wrong. And many of your Baptist churches, your Baptist preachers, that's not how you handle it. You're turning the Sadducees away. <laughs> I've heard that one. Not Sadducees. You're turning the people away. Paul said, have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? Somebody I saw on, my fa on the Facebook today if you read the Bible and you pray properly, you there are no one in such cases that will, you know, be an enemy to the church. I said, Paul was. Paul spoke the truth. I have spoken the truth to churches and been asked to leave. And I didn't mean to start trouble. I didn't. I had one pass. He said, what happened? I told him the truth. Uh, don't come back. Uh, I'll be back next week. No, don't come back. Over that? Yeah. Well, you know, you had a a, a non-King James preacher in the pulpit while you were gone. Who gives you the right to check it out? As a member of this church, I gave myself the right because you didn't know while you were in absence. What gives you the right to tell my Sunday school teacher he's wrong? He was. Well, I don't believe he was wrong. And then you're wrong. Well, what gives you? And I even had to pat one passage of it. Touch not the Lord's anointing, do his prophets no harm. That's Old Testament. Listen, a lot of people be quite, quite frank on who what Jesus really was. He's not your liberal, fluffy toe, having a s'mores by the campfire, smoking marijuana. Man, I believe Jesus would be very short, very muscular, with a big Jewish nose, and he didn't want to mess with us. Do not ye therefore err, 
Because you know not the scriptures. Well, look at that. You know, I think at the judgment seat of Christ of Christians alone, I believe that's going to be said to a lot of pastors. I think that's going to be said to a lot of Christians. Err! Because you know not the scriptures? Well, I had the NIV. Err! You know not the scriptures? Oh, I belong to this council of Ah, you not know the scriptures? A woman walks up there. Well, I was a preacher. Ah, you know not the scriptures. Well, I knew Hebrew and Greek. Ah, you didn't know the scriptures. Neither the power of God. <laughs> the power is going out in the church today. He's talking to this religious group that works in the temple. And after 70 AD, they dwindled down. I think the Baptist church before the Lord comes is going to dwindle down. Pastors are retiring. Pastors are, the, pastors are, I've had two churches I have been in. The pastors left early. And no one to fulfill their pulpit. In Volusia County, Florida. I've known three others, no, two other pastors in Connecticut retired. Friend, when I first got saved, on a, a pastor didn't retire. He got in that office, and he stayed into that office. And when he was going to retire, when he was sickly, when he was ill, when he was going to give it up, he would find somebody, wouldn't it be an associate pastor, he would find a young man, take him under his arm, and show him out of the congregation. They didn't go to no seminary. They didn't go to no big college. They took him out of the congregation. He trained them. That's what the Bible way. And he helped him to take over the Pope. Now today we get him from seminaries. And we wonder where the church is going wrong. And we got these programs. We got these things. We're going to paint our faces. We're going to put costumes on. We're going to make the altar at stage. We're going to have fun, fun, fun. The Jesus comes home. We're not going to preach the gospel. We're going to have the church. We're going to put my lovely family's picture on the track. And we're going to show how beautiful our church is. We're going to show, hey, look at all the great men. See their pictures coming for the revival. And we're not going to tell you that we're going to have a great camp meeting. We're going to look at the family coming to sing the beautiful pictures. Look at their ugly faces. No Jesus. No scriptures. Hot dogs. Clowns. And be the first one to get the raffle tickets. 7 p.m. every night. And a meal to be served. And in today's churches, blessed sure is Jesus is not mine. How great thou art, our pastor. You know what the power of God is? Have you ever had God answer one of your prayers? Have you ever had God guide you in the right way? Have you ever had God say, hey, you know what? You're, you're living in sin. You need to repent. Job had one of those powers of God. Paul had one of those powers of God. Peter ultimately had all those powers of God. When they shall rise from the dead, I thought, wait a minute. They don't believe in the resurrection. You know what Jesus said? You are in the scriptures. You don't know the power of God. Now let me deal with your heresy. Let me deal with your falseness. They shall rise from the dead. There is a resurrection. And there's a great resurrection coming up with them. Now what are you going to do when you get these preachers get up there? <clears throat> say this prayer. Come to the altar and say this prayer. Imagine Jesus saying, You're to preach the gospel. 
They were to believe the gospel. In a million seven years, you're going to see that great error. The great error. And all these people are going to go to hell. Because you were to preach the gospel. You know, God takes a good record. You imagine if he called up the books of these churches, of all the numbers, 26 in the seat today, three of them got saved. Imagine God pulled those numbers up. He tells them right off the back, you error not knowing the scriptures. You don't believe it? He says, they shall rise from the dead. That rebuke, the said, and they don't listen. Because they go on believing there is no resurrection. You've dealt with those people if you had a, any public ministry. You tell them about Jesus. You tell them the way of salvation. You give them the gospel. And they walk off in eternity off into hell. And there are Christians and churches out there that will stop them. Tell them to say this prayer and push them over the bridge themselves. I'm trying to work with some of those people. Well, I had one guy in prison one time. My, my preacher prays for me. I couldn't go nowhere. I've had him say to me, well, I said a prayer in church. All right, I hope the prayer was a saving prayer. While they rise from the dead, he deals with the unbelief first. They neither marry. Okay, here's the question. All right, I think we can benefit from this too as the church. We do not get married in church. I mean, we do not get in married in heaven. All right, this matches. This does not defile the the, the church doctrines, the church epistles. This is something new. This is something the Old Testament people never knew. They're neither Mary. Well, thank, thank God for for Solomon. The only thing great with Solomon is the greeting card company. He would have to get a mail mail order. Get me a thousand cards, July first, January first, and mail them out. I don't know what date it was, but. Neither marry. All right, so you will not get married in glory. For the church is not here yet. You're married to Jesus. Israel is married to God. Nor are they given to marriage. So there will be no court in. No marriage license not needed in heaven. And if the representation read correctly about the Bible, all Christians will be males, well, we're not going to have male sodomite marriages. I know some don't believe we will be all males, but we shall be as in, you know, 33-year-old males. You don't believe that? I mean, okay, that's not sound doctrine, but, but are as the angels which are in heaven. So we will be as angels. You can't kill an angel. We'll be in heaven. We're not going to be the devils. We'll be ambassadors in representation before God the Father and the Son, Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have wings. We don't fly what we whiz without automobiles. And when we come back with Jesus... It says in Joel, we'll be shot and thrust through. It ain't going to bother We're still going to keep ranks. So with the innumerable angels that are in heaven, that number of angels will be added when somebody really gets saved. And as touching the dead. Oh, wait a minute. Angels? 
They didn't believe in the resurrection, and they didn't believe in angels, and Jesus said they're real. And they walk off not believing. Your Baptist church, you tell the Baptist church, let me see, let me think, let me pull something out of the air. Uh, Easter and Christmas are pagans. Oh no, no, no. Yeah, but we like it. We don't matter what, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep doing it. You Sadducees. Do you not err knowing the scriptures? You want me to give it the pastor's names? You want me to tell you how wrong your baby ass is? That because of you, I've had to go into churches that are not correct, that are not right, that are not King James Bible because of you? I tell you, I tell the Lord about you, brother, and your pride because of decorations. I've done no sin. I tell the Lord about you. So Jesus tells them the dead rises, but they don't get married. Now, maybe marriage, I don't know what the Sadducees believe about marriage, but there it is. As touching the dead, this will match Christian doctrine by Paul. I'm not Paul onlyism, as one pastor said I was. Kind of funny, I'm Paul only, but I was going to do the book of Proverbs. And that guy called me out in front of the whole neighborhood of my Bible study that I was, and I forget what they called, but Paul only. I didn't realize then, I was, uh, you know, I heard it first time. I didn't realize, you, you, wait a minute, I'm doing the book of Proverbs by Solomon on Paul only. And you couldn't balance your checkbook. You spent your money, oh, just here's a card, get the money. As touching the dead, have you not read the book of Moses? The question is about Moses. The seed, the brother, the widow. That's in Moses. Um, I didn't write the date down. I, mean, I didn't write the verse down. It's in the law. I have one here, Leviticus 19. All right, so you are quoting from the law. Get this one. But have you not read the law? Do you know you can have a, a pastor get up and say, open your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew? Do you realize he may never have read Matthew? Or he could have read Matthew and not studied Matthew. The Bible says, study and show thyself approved unto God. There are people that read their Bible through the whole entire year. Amen. Good. Glory to God. But you didn't study it. There's a difference. You go read through, hey, did it another year, mark it off. Where's Jesus? I don't know. Can you quote one Bible verse? No. I think it's funny. I was in a church one time. You know, okay. hey, we got to quote a Bible verse. I, I haven't learned one. I said, come here. I said, John 11, 35, Jesus wept. John 11, 35, Jesus wept. And they go off and they come back. Hey, hey. <laughs> Even a five-year-old, six-year-old can quote a Bible verse. And it was more something that when they came back from the class, they would take me and say, show me it, show me it, show me it. And I opened up my Bible and showed it and said, yeah, Jesus went. Are you that excited? Have you read? I want to meet preachers out there, any denomination. I know Catholics don't read it. Have they read their Bible?
And he comes to him with a Pacific, a Pacific subject. Have you studied the dead in the book of Moses? You're going to teach on a lesson. You're going to teach something in front of your church. You're going to relate something. Have you studied? Because there's some people that get up and they don't know what they're talking about. You want his name? And then when I went up to him, well, that's what someone told me. Well, someone could tell you blue grass. You're going to believe it? Some people say, well, bluegrass is good. I said, the only bluegrass I know is your toilet overfilled with the septic tank in the front yard. How in the bush, remember that, Exodus? So we're in the book of Exodus. God spoke unto him, Moses, saying, I am. Now look where God goes, I am. I guarantee the Sadducees don't believe that. Because they are right now talking to the great I am. And a lot of churches today don't believe that. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. That is true. He is not the God of the dead. But the God of the living... Whosoever has the Son has everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes shall not perish. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I know a brother in the Lord that may have died yesterday, today, or in a couple days. He may die in hospice. But he believes and his wife believes he'll be with Jesus. To be absent from the body and present with the Lord. In all actuality, as far as the spirit, which they don't believe in, and the soul, a Christian doesn't die. Now the body, the body, Paul says in Thessalonians, sleeps. You ain't dead if your body's sleeping. We don't die. What about a lost man? And he died, they buried him, and he woke up in hell in torments. An unsaved man doesn't die. Because you know what the primary thing is until Jesus died, and they didn't know this even then. The Old Testament saints went to Abraham's bosom and his flesh, and they read the account of Samuel. Samuel says, hey, why awakens me? In Abraham's bosom. God is not the God of the dead. And there are religions and there are mythologies in Greek and Roman and, and, and Egyptian and, of dead. You see that in Halloween. That's not our God. But the God of the living, he therefore do greatly err, again, throws it at him. So, there is a resurrection. There is no marriage in heaven. There is really no death And you don't know your, your scriptures. You greatly err. And you're a bunch of people go out and teaching people. And that's going on 2023 today. There are people running around today. It's okay to be a sodomite. It's okay to be a transgender. All are welcome here. And going to say, you greatly err. Have you not studied the scriptures? It's an abomination. 
you can't carry on a, a lifestyle of sin and be pleasing to God. And there are preachers out there that be, oh, you know, I'm saved by grace. I'm saved by grace. No Lord at all. I can do whatever I want to do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Give me a Budweiser. As long as it's not Bud Light, I'm saved. I think it's funny today. I got to say this and I'm done. I saw a picture on Facebook today. Aunt Jemima says, Lisa, I'm real. And you took her off the packaging. Aunt Jemima professed to be a woman, a colored woman, on her package, and you removed her. And you put this it on a can. 